Masters, today we're going to talk about how to operate with a CB, how to operate a CB rent suit. Because a CB rent suit is uh, a kind of um, technological kind of piece of a, a, a protection equipment. So the first thing you always have to do is read the manual. Uh, this is uh, we're going to talk about the M2 the M2000 uh, CBRN suit, uh, which is uh, from the Dutch Army. Uh, this is the Dutch uh, Army manual where you will find uh, all the information about this suit. Uh, it's you can order it online, uh, perhaps find it in some uh, some flea markets or something. But this is the kind of information you want to to read before you going to. Uh, Put on the suit and go into a danger zone. So um, knowledge is power. So what is the first thing you need to know about the suit? How you operate with uh, such one? Well, uh, the first thing I would advise is after you are informed, uh, before you plan to go outside during a nuclear disaster, uh, first take the first see if the situation is safe. Uh, I would adv uh, advise, and the most uh, manuals advise, uh, after a nuclear disaster or a fallout, uh, wait at least nine weeks before you go into a contaminated zone. Uh, like I perhaps said before, this is the time where uh, the most of the fallout radiation has a chance to be blown over your area by the wind, and so uh, or over in the higher atmosphere. So. Those pose uh, less threats uh, than in the uh, in those nine weeks before, so uh, be sure to listen to the radio or the or internet or some 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 else way to find information about what are the levels uh, the radiation levels of the of the hit the area that got hit, or you can try to uh, yeah I would first put on the suit before you go a little bit outside and measure it with your uh, Geiger counter but those are ways to try to find out if it's safe to go outside well, uh, well before you put on the suit you need to be uh, mentally and physically prepared uh, what do I mean by that well uh, you first you got to be physically uh, ready uh, you got to have eaten well you got to have drink uh, drink enough water uh, why do I say this uh, because you don't want to spend uh, uh, the maximum time you can go outside with a CBRN suit in a in such a closed uh, and tight environment is uh, six hours recommended and that's for personnel who have been training for this so keep that in mind as a as a normal civilian who put this on for the first time. Uh, you got to be physically in shape because you will notice in a moment breathing is harder. So every movement you do is will be twice as hard. Uh, your breathing will take on your breath. So pe people who have uh, condition uh, who have inhalation conditions like uh, asthma or some other inhalement problems, I would not recommend to let them wander around in a CB rent suit. Uh, next thing, you got to be flushed. Uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, it's, a very, it's very difficult to put this suit back on and off in just like that. So before you go out, go to the toilet. Uh, make sure that you don't need to take a shit before, uh, before you go outside. Uh, drink enough water so you don't dry out because the suit, it's very, it can be very warm and very hard to move in so you'll sweat a lot and you you will be you can even uh, dehydrate inside of it if you're long enough outside uh, that's the danger of it uh, there is a there is a CBR uh, gas mask which can allow you to drink from a special container but I will not talk about this because that's a specialized piece of equipment and that's uh, that kind of canteen for the, which you have to use for it I don't have so we're going to talk about just uh, these gas masks without the drinking uh, part. Uh, you have to wear something thermal because in the summer, yeah, you don't need to wear much underneath it, but uh, because there is danger you get overheating. That's something you need to calculate. Uh, look what the temperature will be. Uh, next thing is uh, 
cold because uh, nuclear disasters can happen during cold uh, time of the year and you don't want to freeze to death while you're outside there. It can get hot in a suit, but when the weather outside is freezing almost or some or even the, uh, around that temperature, it can be very dangerous. So try to wear a thermic underwear, believe it, in colder days. All right, we are going to put on the suit. Uh, I will take this off. All right, uh, when you wear the suit, like I said, I will not put this on now because I will not go outside, but need, you can use thermic underwear like light weight uh, and thin materials, or you can use uh, a woolen sweater. It will take some more room inside of the suit, but it uh, will keep you warm for a long period and it will absorb the, the sweat, damp and water loss. All right, so you're, you have drink, you have drinking, you went to the toilet, you've eaten well because you don't want to pass out from a lack of sugar uh, and, and uh, hunger, well nourishment. So we're going to put on the suit. This is the bottom uh, side of the suit. As you can see, it has some uh, brittle-like uh, suspensions on and it's very wide. Um, why it's very wide? Uh, because it has to fit m uh, multiple sizes of persons and perhaps you need to wear something beneath it. So that's some room. And yet still, it can be very tight to wear. All right. So, like you can see, you have to close this on from the inside because it's multiple layers. Zip it, and again, close it again. Those are three layers around it, so this area, nothing gets added under it. Put on the suspensors. Make sure the suspenders keep the, the, the pants as high as possible. Uh, why? Because the suit, the overall, the parka will go over it, so there is less area where the particles can uh, get through beneath it. So it's normal that it's this high up. Um, yeah. Then I would advise to, yeah, like I said, it's a little bit tight to do it just like that. So I'm going to open this again because uh, it will restrict otherwise my movement. These are the overshoes. Um, I'm going to wear it without my shoes because to be honest, it's a little small size in the boots for me, so I'm going barefoot in this case. Normally I wear uh, a sort of type of moccasin in it, so my feet are still protected and a little bit warm, and I wear woolen socks, so that way it will keep protecting me. I will put this on. Like you can see, you have to put it, put it a little bit low. These over boots, you see, they have these little types of uh, of uh, lids. These go over, put them around. There is the second one, goes around. The third one goes around, and then you put your uh, trouser pipes over it. And you make it as tight as possible to get around it. Like you can see, it must go over the, over the boot and as low as possible, and it must be held tight as possible. Uh, to be sure, you can still. If you want to be sure that nothing of uh, water, because perhaps it, it has rain, there are puddles. You can put some duct tape around the edges of the where the boots and the pants will meet to get some extra closure uh, to prevent water uh, contaminate water getting inside of it. So uh, now we're gonna put number two on. I just wanna say, imagine if you have to do this 
during uh, this out, during as a military during the Cold War, that any moment the bombs can fall, and you have to uh, go to run to your uh, in your base to the place where they where the suits lay, and you have to uh, put it on in as fast as possible. Imagine that scenario. Uh, it's not really about here, but just something to talk about when I put this on. All right. So now I put uh, this on. I'm gonna close this off again because I, to be honest, I'm gonna be a little bit fatter. So that's another problem uh, with this suit. Spenders on. All right. So. Uh, now, the next part you're gonna put on is the parka. It has a put on. I will put the camera a little bit higher. You put this open. Put it around. And you will see there are yet again double layers of a uh, Materials. You just want to leave this a little bit open for the gas mask uh, in a moment. Make everything close. All right. Um, the gas mask is the last thing you should put on because that's handy because your fingers will uh, will be needed to be honest. And talking about gas masks, um, there are two types of gas mask mainly. Uh, this is the American M10 uh, M21 gas mask. As you can see, these are uh, this one has a drinking option for uh, for special canteens, but the filters are inside of the gas mask where you have to change, which is very dangerous uh, to do in such a situation. So I would opt for a gas mask that is CBR graded uh, like this, but with a, a filter that you, you can turn on. Oh, and turn back on for a quick change for when it's full. Uh, you have to choose which one is better. This maybe is perhaps better quality, but with this you can change directly. And before you enter, you can take it off and put a new put a new one after contamination. So that's something you need to wear out uh, for. Uh, perhaps I should put the lights on because it's getting a little bit dark. That uh, should do it. All right. Uh, gas uh, gas mask. Yeah, I'm gonna put first this on. Uh, if what you take this, do it around your head. I hope you can hear this. Make sure the gas mask is uh, airtight. So put your hands on the filter. And if you cannot breathe, that means this is has been sealed off. Then you put the hood over the head and you close it off first with the zipper high up. Make sure this is all tight up. Close it off around the rubber parts. You will see it when normally every military gas mask have this place where it goes around tightly. You take the cords and you tie it up and now this one is also sealed around the gas mask so also make sure that the gas mask you have cleaned the glasses with a, with a soap or vinegar or something that will stop fogging because you don't want to go outside and be blind because even in the beginning when you can see everything it can be very difficult after a time of, of doing uh, physical uh, activities in this and this will start to fog. Now we're gonna put on the, the gloves. As you can hear, even by doing this movement, it's very uh, difficult to breathe. I'm in a good condition, but I'm already feeling a little bit... Uh, a feeling uh, the, the, that the eye will not last in this for hours. So imagine when somebody is untrained, 
not in a good physical shape, it will be twice as hard for that person. So, think about that. Uh, now, before you put on the, the rubber, the rubber uh, CBR grid gloves, you have to wear these cotton gloves. Uh, for several reasons. One is to get better grip. Uh, so, you're not... Uh, uh, when, when your hands get wet of the sweat, uh, it will not glide against the gloves. But this will take some of the sweat and damp on. And that will form, that will make precision grips better with the bigger gloves that will come on this. So, you put the cotton gloves on. And then you take the, oh, another thing. Don't forget to already put the tape a little bit outside because it will be a bridge to to get it on with like that. Then you take the glove, you put the parka a sleeve around it. Yet again, you make it as tight around as you possibly can. And again, do it for the same, the same for the other side. Oh. Put it around, tight as possible, and just to be sure, you can, like as you like you do with the boots, you can put some tape around to get some extra sealment if you want to be that careful. You can do it the same for the other. Now this, now I am com completely sealed from the contaminated possible air. And I must say, it's uh, imagine doing hard physical uh, labor and running uh, or long distance uh, stepping inside of this. It's very hard and it will be very exhausting. And I would suggest to uh, do all this when you go outside. Take a spare filter. And carry it around in the in the gas mask ba bag that is made of uh, of sturdy material and CBR material that will keep everything out. You can wear it around your uh, waist uh, and shoulders like a strap. That's not a problem. So that is the CBRN N2000 uh, CBRN suit of the Dutch Army. If I must go outside, I can now do it uh, after, of course, for taking the first precautions. But now we have another problem. When I'm going out, and if you go out, uh, the recommended uh, time you go outside in soot in uh, after nine weeks in a contaminated area. Oh, sorry. You can maximum be six hours outside because then the particles and wetness and perhaps dirt or whatever can be can start to soak the outline of them of the material because this is not just a, a layer that will protect you it is it's like a bulletproof vest it will stop a certain amount of uh, particle particles and uh a radioactivity but don't forget after a, after a certain amount after a certain time of uh, exposure it will start to get leaky to say because you have to put some chemical on this uh, regularly if you want to use it multiple times to get like a protective layer like in the rain but that's uh, something i don't have so i cannot use this suit forever and if you want to use it multiple times, you can maximum uh, wear it 30 days after cleaning and decontamination. And then the suit will be not be guaranteed to stop most of the particles. So the suit will wear out after a certain amount of time. And not only by, by tearing or something, but also by 
exposure to uh, particles. So that's something to be very careful about. So, uh, how much time do I still have? Oh. So, you got back from whatever thing you must have done outside. You're now in a safe zone. Before you enter the safe zone, I would uh, advise to take the suit out in a certain manner that you that is safer for the for in for yourself and other people inside of the safe zone. Um, that's why I would suggest to get this. Uh, this is a, a manual hand pump for spraying water. You normally the in the normal procedures you would have a line, a special line, that is out of the wind, manned by people in CB red suits, with specialized chemicals, hot wa hot watery soap, uh, what, warm soapy water, and uh, in a certain line where every person has a task to decontaminate everything from the other units. But as a civilian, that's kind of hard to do without, uh, without military training or the equipment. So to improvise, you fill this up or you let somebody else fill this up before you enter this, the decontamination zone with warm, soapy water. That is the best thing to get particles of it, of your uh, suit. And yeah, it might sound stupid, but you start to pump and yourself or somebody else needs to spray everything off you. Uh, this has enough power to get to, uh, to spray off most chemicals. Do it in a zone where the wind will not blow. And especially if there is wind that is does not blow in the direction of the, the safe zone and uh, where other people are. Be very careful about it. Start to spray all around the body, everything. But be careful that you do not spray the filter. If, like I said, you will take this, uh, take this filter off the moment before entering the safe zone because you have to, re to put another filter on it directly and leave the contaminated filter in the garbage. So, try to close this off for a few times before spray around the head. So, now you have just sprayed yourself on, but there might still be a lower... You go to the next zone, where the sprayed water uh, is not around, that you do not expose yourself to the contaminated particles that you sprayed off. You go to a next zone, and there you start off by... Uh, Taking the gas mask off, take the filter off. That was the carabine hook. Take the filter off. It's kind of difficult to do. Normally, you get assistance for this. If you do not practice this enough, you will have this problem, like you will see with me. Oh, oh there it is. You take the filter off uh, by grabbing on the front. Don't try to get co uh, uh, try to not get contact with your gloves, uh, even if they are sprayed uh, with your skin. That's the thing. You need to take this suit off with the least uh, skin exposure if you possibly can. So take the mask off, and normally you would you would lay it in a line where it's specialized to to be decontaminated by uh, other people who, with CB red suits. And then you follow a next uh, station, decontamination station, where you take off the gloves. That's the problem now with the duct tape, because it's uh, taped off very well. So, tearing it off will be a little bit tricky now. I should have thought about that earlier. 
by leaving uh, some things over, uh, open like this. Uh, everything you take off and everything you, you divide it in two things. The things you can re reuse again after decontamination and things you need to throw away like this duct tape uh, if there's no use. So uh, when you're in the decontamination zone you would put it in plastic uh, bags and after, uh, after that seal it off and put it in a safe place for storage uh, till you can get, all, get rid of it uh, in a safe uh, manner and dispose of it. Uh, the problem now is I have tied it too well here, so normally I would uh, not advise this to do or do it by somebody else because I done a very big mistake in that part, so we can learn from these mistakes. Uh, like you see, this would uh, be very dangerous to do this with my bare hands, so always uh, don't make the same mistake as me and try to leave some lips off you can take with the, even with the gloves so the gloves yet again uh, we'll put this back on for to get into the procedures so yet again the gloves try to take them off uh, without exposing like don't try to grab the other side but grab by the fingers especially uh, when you take the gloves off uh, you see you can still grab some and take it off like that and that way if you're gonna put it away keep your hands still inside of the gloves and lay it in the next uh, station for decontamination so that's the next thing I would recommend to keep the gloves a little bit on because these are still a little bit layer protection for the next things because you're going to touch the suit or let somebody else in a CB rain suit take it off for you Open it up. Try to oh. try to ex uh, take it off and uh, in a, such a way that you less let somebody else all take it off. Normally, take it from the inside and never touch the outside and put it in the decontamination zone to let it uh, decontaminate by somebody else. Uh, and again. The pants. Uh, yeah, first, of course, the yeah, that's the problem. The overboots um, you have to take off. So I'm gonna put this a little bit open. Open it up, and that's also a reason why it's wide open. So you have a little almost umbrella-like thing because if there are still particles falling off, uh, the dripping off from previously is a decontamination it will rain next to the foot so you have a little bit space to working take it all off try to grab it as high as possible because it's especially especially this part that might be contaminated it should be sprayed off thoroughly with hot soapy water normally but you want to keep it a uh, as clean as possible. Yet again, take the next one off. Take it off, take it off. Those go into the next uh, part of the decont decontamination line. And then you can take the gloves off. Also decontaminate, decontaminate decontamination zone. Take the suspenders off. And try to take it off without touching the others, the outer side. You should, because the suit is a little bit bigger, should glide out of it. Yet again, being taken over in the decontamination zone. Uh, yeah. And now we are uh, we're ready to to be showered. Um, before before you go back inside, you should take a, a, a shower that even if you have particles. Uh, that you have particles perhaps during the decontamination you shower you're clean you, you take on new clothes uh, clothes put them on let's say that these are new clothes i put on and then the next thing i would uh, advise to do is uh, bef uh, when you're before when you're entering the decontamination zone uh, first of all uh, you will probably need some water and 
and food too because it's it's been a it should be very exhausting and uh, it will take a lot of energy to use a suit in such uh, areas. Um, try to take some pectin uh, because perhaps you got some radiation that even got through the suit, like beta and gamma radiation, and you need that uh, that that is perhaps in your system. So, with if you eat pectin or uh, drink something like alcohol, like vodka or something, something that will make you try make you uh, shit or pee uh, really f uh, much faster so the contamination that is inside of you uh, gets exposed uh, uh, being exposed on faster through the toilet so that's something to also to think about and now you're safe uh, again to mingle in the safe zone with other people without uh, risk to exposure them uh, another thing i want to mention uh, something i forgot and uh, you will uh, not perhaps uh, think about, I didn't think it about it either before I read it, the gas mask, uh, uh, before you use it, uh, try to shave, because when you have a big beard, uh, mine is not that long, so it's okay for, it was no problem for uh, the gas mask, but people with longer beard or certain facial features will have more problem because of it, so shave your, your uh, beard and shave your head, uh, because you some radiation can be caught up uh, perhaps during the decontamination or being uh, exposed through the suit by betas and, and gamma ray, rays uh, shave your head, shave your beard uh, so there is less chance that you bring in uh, some radiation uh, yeah that's the the use of a CBRN suit uh, to put it on and off uh, I would highly uh, uh, advise to learn yourself up more uh, in manuals before ever thinking about these suits keep in shape uh, uh, so you will be more physical fit to use one of the suits uh, and not only in a condition but also in shape because uh, to be honest the suit has has been a little bit tight for me I have some problems with uh, full bend bending that's normal with a suit but uh, I gain something I, I admit so uh, that's also something to think about when you when you buy one of these suits uh, try to take a size bigger even though it will fit you very well because perhaps <coughs> <coughs> excuse me because later on you perhaps will not fit in it or you need you have some extra suits and you you need to give it to your partner or child who is a little bit obese perhaps and you still want to have them a safe suit to get to an evac evacuation zone or point uh, because those are two things two times the two ways i would use one of these uh, suits one for when i do a booking and i need to go outside and back inside to be protected or to reach an evacuation point through the zone like i'm not doing a bugging but the the thing the case is worse than they thought and i need to go outside of this zone because the contamination is too level is too high then I would use this suit as well and take it off <coughs> uh, you would take a bug out bag with you and I would advise to put a bug out bag in as much uh, layers of plastic bags uh, perhaps so, some other CBRN suits or inside of uh, this kind of bags to do not decontaminate the insides. Uh, there is a chance that, that when you go outside of the, the quarantine zone, that nothing may leave it. Like you may leave only when you take taken everything off because it's the same case with the gasoline. Cars who go outside of a quarantine zone uh, must drive their uh, gasoline tank empty so they don't spray it through their exhaust uh, outside of the quarantine zone. The same thing is for when you take a bug out bag, you, you may not uh, be permitted to, to leave the zone with, that, with those uh, stuff. So, <coughs> sorry, that's uh, my, my, uh, my, my small instruction. I'm not a professional. Uh, I would advise to take, uh, like I said, read manuals, learn from people who work with this every day, like people who clean containers. Uh, we have to wear. We have to work with such suits. Uh, be sure that your suit is up to date. Uh, another thing: 
when you buy a CBRN suit, like in dump stores uh, or uh, second hands, uh, I would advise to be sure to test it first. Tests that there are no tears, no holes, punctures, uh, that the gas mask is always uh, in good shape, not only with the filters, but also the glasses, the, the, the ventil seals, because those, uh, if one of those things don't work, uh, it's useless, to be honest. Uh, yeah, so I hope you learned something from this, gave you some ideas, some insight in, in uh, what, uh, what, uh, what you see in movies and what you, or in video games, or what you see, or what is uh, truly used in the, in the military and civil uh, protection. Uh, Leave a like, subscribe and all that good stuff. Uh, I hope you will never have to use one of these suits, but it's better to have one and not need it than to need one and not have it. So, thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Uh, there will be a next part and it will be about uh, nuclear weapons uh, scenarios. So, that's something uh, you will see in the next part of this series. So, thank you for watching.